Hey YouTube, just wanted to uh, follow through on our promise to do an in-depth video on the Karma gene in blood pythons. So what we're going to do here is we are going to start with our youngest Karma animals that we have. Uh, this particular clutch here that we'll show you is from a Karma to karma breeding it should be a 2014 male produced by us and a 2013 female produced by john childers uh, in this particular clutch of karmas karma to karma again uh, we produced all karmas t positives and t negatives there were no normal uh, wild type looking animals in the entire clutch so I'll give you a little bit of history on the trait. In 2013, a gentleman named John Childers, aka Dio Child on Fauna Forums, uh, produced a clutch from breeding a uh, Bushmaster T negative to a T positive albino from Crip, Chris Lips, uh, who was a breeder of some pretty fine quality T-positive albinos in Arizona back around this time. Uh, the animals were clearly unrelated, coming from wildly different origins. Uh, and when John hatched the clutch, he had roughly half a clutch of these interesting, bright, uh, orangish, babies um, and then the other half of the clutch was seemingly wild type animals um, no visual distinction uh, i can remember back around that time seeing john posting about this clutch that he had thinking wow i obviously have something different here but i don't know what's going on and i had a conversation with Allie at the time that i absolutely had to have these animals if i could get my hands on them um, around that time, there was still quite a bit of stigma around breeding uh, the T-positive albino into the T-negative albino. Um, but since the gates had been open, I felt comfortable trying to move forward with it. So I reached out to John, and John explained to me uh, the background lineage of the animals and what he had done to produce them. And uh, we set up an arrangement where I would take the entire clutch. Um, we did receive the entire clutch, and once we got them, I was amazed uh, at the variation and the difference between the clutch mates. So as you can see in this photo here, there is a very rich orange coloration. Uh, where you might expect to see red in a wild type blood python and then a very vibrant yellow um, in the the dorsal spotting and striping and then some fantastic grays oranges and what fades into yellowish towards the uh, the bottoms of the sides and then any of the areas that you would see that would normally be black uh, were not and still to this day are not black. That is a very deep and rich purple. Now, the normal siblings to this first clutch were exactly that. They were um, mostly normal. They exhibited red coloration. They exhibited true black coloration um, pretty much across the board. So it was a definite split down the middle um, as far as looks and coloration and all of that so in 2014 i had a t negative male that we bred to a het t positive female we figured let's just give it a shot why not so uh, in 2014 we bred those two animals together and we produced a partial clutch of what eventually became karma what we named karma and uh, normal blood pythons 
there is, at the end of this, there is a bunch of pictures of karmas that we've produced throughout the years, and you will see uh, a clutch of eggs hatching that show a karma hatching right next to a normal blood python, and you, you will definitely see the difference there. So in 2014, we did that breeding. So we produced, we, we proved uh, that that was a genetically reproducible uh, trait. Um, while we still hadn't had an opportunity to breed any of the original clutch or the 2014 stuff, we were confident that this was something that was going to be reproducible and we had a lot of work to do. So. Now, moving on to 2015, uh, we tried to breed our karma producing T negative uh, to a, uh, another T negative that we got from uh, Bushmaster Reptiles, and we produced all T negatives, but we did not produce any karma in that clutch. In 2016, we bred the karma producing T negative to a normal female and produced all normals. There were no karma in that clutch. They were all visually normal, 100% half for T negative. In 2017, we bred that T negative male again to a het T negative female, uh, unrelated, and we produced all T negatives and I'm sorry, yes, T negatives and normals that were 100% had T negative. In 2018, we bred one of our karmas that we produced in 2014 to a HET T positive VPI, and we produced karma T plus and normals. So at this point now, we have bred one of the karmas that we have and we were able to produce karmas breeding that to a het t positive so we did produce visual t positives in this clutch but to this day we still do not know if the uh, visual t positive can also be a karma um, and actually if you on the screen now is one of the females um, that we held back from that clutch. We held back two females and then I think a male T positive that could potentially be a karma. So anyhow, it's still really early on in our breeding trials at this point and we just don't know what's going on. But what we do know is that some T negatives bred to T positive gene carriers can produce karmas. But not everything that is a HET T negative or a HET T positive can be a karma. Now remember, we have several clutches now that have produced normal offspring from a visual T negative to a visual T positive and a visual T negative to a HET T positive. So we believe that there's some sort of intermediate gene or an entirely different gene working in the background that is allelic with these uh, albino traits. Moving on to 2019. So at the beginning of the video, we showed a bunch of smaller uh, karma and uh, T positives and T negatives. So that particular clutch there was a karma to a karma, and it produced all karmas, T positives, and T negatives. Still, we do not know if the visual T negatives or the T positives are also karma. Um, the assumption is that they are, since we did not produce any normals in that clutch. In 2019, we also bred a karma of ours that we produced to a normal and produced no karmas. Again, all visually normal animals. Uh, that would be possible het for albino, possible het for T negative. So again, in that breeding, you should have a crossover of the T negative and the T positive gene at least somewhere in that clutch, and it did not produce any uh, visual karmas. Uh, we also, 
2019 bred a Karma sibling from the original clutch, 2013, to uh, another normal sibling from the Karma clutch in 2013. We did not produce any Karmas, but we did produce T positives and T negatives. So again, we have those normal looking het for T positive, het for T negative, proven that they are het for both uh, when bred together did not produce any karmas. So at that point, it tells me that there is some sort of other gene that is linking to all of that stuff. So potentially we're talking about three genes working in the background on these karma breedings. In 2020, we bred a non-karma sibling to a non-karma sibling again and produced T positive and T negative. These were different uh, siblings from the original clutch than the one we did the previous year. Uh, produced T positive, T negative, and no karma. So again, we proved that it can be a HET T positive and a HET T negative and not be a karma gene carrier. Um, at this point, I mean, I'll be completely honest with you. We are thoroughly confused by the mode of inheritance. Um, what likely does make the most sense is that there is a third gene at play and uh, it is allelic uh, at the very least with the T positive gene. And whatever this other trait is likely came from the T negative line that was coming from Bushmaster. Now, I don't have 100% uh, confirmation on this, but I do believe that around that time, the T negatives that were being sold out of Bushmaster were coming from cryptic reptiles in Florida. A uh, private breeder that had a very significant collection of T negatives. Uh, and that's where we think that it actually originated from. Now, the trouble with the T negative albinos is our original male that we have, visual T negative male, uh, he just doesn't look any different to us. And I think it's at this point, until we start to identify more uh, visual cues, I just don't think it's possible to tell the difference between a uh, potential karma T negative uh, and a normal T negative. And I think that that's how this additional um, trait made its way out into private collections. Um, we consider ourselves extremely, extremely lucky to be able to work with these animals. And we are so grateful to John to give us an opportunity to work with these in 2013. Um, I think it's fairly safe to say that we have the largest and most diverse collection. And I know with the exception of Matt Turner, um, we have been working on these by far the longest. Uh, Matt did a similar uh, pathway to the karma trait that we did, um, but he did start working on them afterwards. Uh, Matt started producing karmas, breeding them in with uh, his lily stuff. And if you guys have not seen a lily karma, it is legitimately one of the most stunning animals on the planet. Now, karma themselves with their bright yellows and their vibrant oranges and their deep purples uh, are a sight to behold by themselves. When you see one in person, you will absolutely know that it is a karma. But when you add in the lily gene and you intensify what would have been the red areas and it turns it into this just absolutely stunning background color, uh, you know you have to have it. So speaking of which, this here is a Karma Lily that we got from Matt Turner, I wanna say in 2014. Um, she is an absolute crown jewel in our collection. Um, all of those areas there that look like they are black are the inkiest 
purple, uh, so deep and just so magnificent. And then the background coloration with the uh, what would normally be red has that just deep, deep, deep orange bordering on red coloration. And then you can see that consistent, uh, the yellow uh, spotting and striping on the dorsal. Um, just an absolutely stunning animal. So uh, we want to say thank you to Matt Turner in this video and give him credit for the work that he has uh, invested in the Karma Project and uh, helping us try to understand what it is that we are working with um, because we've proven that we certainly would not be able to figure this out on our own. Here is the original T-negative male that we used in 2014 and throughout our uh, uh, breeding trials for the Karma trait. Um, as you can see, I mean, he has a, some varying pattern and doesn't exactly look like every other T-negative out there, but it doesn't look different enough either. Um, not enough to tell whether or not it's an actual Karma. This is the original T-negative male used by John and the original T-positive female used by John. This is a Lily Karma as a juvenile. And then the remaining pictures are Karmas and Normals and um, everything that we've produced and have been working with since 2013. Uh, we did share pretty much the entire collection of karmas and T positives and T negatives from the karma breedings uh, that we currently have in our collection in this video. Um, there are no, there's nothing that we're holding back uh, information wise or animal wise that you haven't seen yet. Um, it's really important for us to try to figure out what the mode of inheritance is here exactly and nail down exactly what it is that's going on. Uh, as you can tell from the pictures, the karmas are truly a special animal. And I think that they, once we figure things out and start mixing it in with other traits, I think we can take it a, a very, very long way. Um, but we need help. Uh, we haven't, we've, been sporadic with uh, being able to breed stuff into T positive uh, directly and getting the results that we would like to see. So we want to see more of these out there and we want to hear your results from the breedings. Thank you for joining. Thank you for listening. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, we really would love to hear your comments on the videos. Uh, give us some feedback on what you think we do well, what we don't do well, and what you like to see and what you don't like to see. Thank you.